Everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Reborn. Also, happy Easter if it is Easter for you, or if you're celebrating Easter or any other spring holiday. So anyways, last time we left off with dealing with the Yuryu Key and the Yuryu Power Plant. We got a Rodom. I showed people how to evolve the Magneton, the Nosepass, and the Charger Bug. So this time we're going to be clearing up the last few events in Reborn City and moving on. Actually here in the Barrel Ward for a very good reason. The first event that I want to move on to is over here. And I'm not going to walk you through this all the way because we've actually been over here before. Please no encounters. Okay, that's good. So we're actually going to go all the way to the end of this cave and I'll talk to you there. So over here at the end of the cave, there should be a clearing. We've been here before, but this time we're going to make it windy and we did show this off, but I never actually complete this event on screen. I pretty much show people the levels and I believe this was like high level 50s or something like that. So you want it to be windy and I don't know if it has to be sunny or not. No, it doesn't have to be sunny. And you will see like a herd of Shiftry and Nuzleaf. So if you move any further, they're going to attack you. And I could have completed this earlier. The Nuzleaf aren't really the problem. So I'm just going to skip to when the Shiftry comes out. Right, here is the Shiftry level 55. So we could have done this much earlier. I remember stating that this was really, really high leveled, and while you could have set the grass on fire over here, the train on fire, the Shiftry, I believe, knows a move that could simply put it out. So I should be able to just knock this Shiftry out. I think, yeah. We are just so over -leveled, leveled for this, and it's not really that big of a deal. And the rest of the Nuzleaf, I think it goes up to like level 30-ish, level 40. So anyways, the Nuzleaf go up to level 30, and the Shiftry is level 55. I think it knows Whirlwind or something. I'm not really sure. Was it Hurricane? I don't recall. But they should move out of the way, and I didn't notice these items earlier. And the Nuzleaf will seem submissive, so you could take the Nuzleaf with you. You can take all of them with you, if you really want to. Like, you can go up to any of them. That's a lot of Nuzleaf. So anyways, we're going to now head back to the Barrel Ward. There's some more events that we actually have to take care of, unfortunately. So back at the Barrel Ward, over here at this house, we're going to go back up to the top of it. Top of this building here. And I believe it has to be nighttime. I don't think you need any weather for this, so I'm just going to clear up the weather really quickly. I don't know if that actually influences it or not, but I believe I need it to be nighttime for certain. So I'm going to go back in and come back out. You will see Pori jump off the roof. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it. That's, that's Azora. So anyways, we are going to have to chase this if we want to catch it. So I'm going to meet you in the Upper Peridot Ward now. Here in the Upper Peridot Ward at the entrance to the Jasper Ward, and we're going to come over to the left and down over here. And again, you'll see the Zora Cory run off. So the next spot that we need to head to is the North Obsidia Ward. So over here in the Obsidia Ward, we're actually going to start from the Grand Staircase, and we're going to come all the way over this way and enter this house. And here you will corner the Zora. So once you talk to it, it will battle you. And this is one of a kind, so I highly recommend that you can catch this. That you catch this if you're trying to complete the Pokedex or anything like that. And also I just wanted to say, originally I didn't think that you could actually catch this right now. I thought you had to wait until later. Also if you check on, like, it's my fourth or fifth video. I think it's the fourth the fourth video to this walkthrough, you'll find somebody actually posted a small guide on how to do this as well. So now that I've caught that, we actually want to leave here. There's one more event that I did not show off, and I'm just going to spray repel here. So it's over here in the Magma Gang Alley, and you should find a Hound Hour. You'll find this whether you're in the Magma Gang or if you're in the Aqua Gang. 
But if you're in the Aqua Gang, you actually need to catch this thing. You need to have Pokesnacks to catch it. And that's pretty much it. But this should be the only way to get Houndour if you were in the Aqua Gang, I believe. So I think that's pretty much everything for Reborn City. But I believe now we should be heading off to the Wasteland. Over here in the Wasteland, I'm starting at the point where if you took the right entrance from where I'm standing, you would be heading off towards the Wasteland Gym. I'm going to be going the route that you would take if you were to be going back to the Squirtle, I believe. And hopefully I get this right. It's been such a long time since I've done this. I have no practice with this at all. So I really feel like I'm going to make a massive mistake. But there's something we can do now that we have access to Blast Powder. I'm not really happy that we have to go back here, but we do, unfortunately. So I want to jump over here. Again, you could just go back to my Squirtle video and figure things out from there. This actually doesn't have anything to do with the Squirtle event, surprisingly. It has to do more so with another event. It's just kind of the same path. Did I go into a dead end? Or did I mess up? Alright, I'll get back to you as soon as I figure this out. So this should definitely be looking familiar to you. This is the starting point that I made mention of when I was doing the Spirit Tomb video. Curious about what parts I'm mentioning. I did the Wasteland side quest in part 9, and the Spirit Tomb video was sorted towards the start of part 10. So anyways, over here is kind of a secret entrance. You'll actually find multiple entrances here, and I believe, not this one, okay, not this one, it should be this one over here, is the entrance that you want to take if you wanted to get Spirit Tomb. The entrance we're concerned with is the one that's all the way to the far right. So when you enter this one, and I don't think I've done this on this file, I'm just going to use flash so people might be able to see from here. There's like a boss fight, okay I did do it on this file, there's like a boss fight with a Garbodor that's named Mr. Bigglesworth, I think. But more importantly is that over here you'll actually find an item that is blocked off by a mining rock. I think I mentioned that at the time, you couldn't do anything about it, and I'll actually take that, sure. The issue here was that even if you mine this rock without blast powder you couldn't get through, and the only way to get blast powder is to have access to 7th Street. And this is actually a pretty big item, honestly. I think, I can only imagine that a lot of people were sitting there scratching their heads wondering how to get a hold of this item. And it's a Dawnstone. So if you're looking for like a Frostlass or a Glade, you can now receive one or evolve one. So now we are done with the Wasteland for certain. And I believe we're going to head back to Tanzan Mountain. Alright, so I'm here at the entrance to Mount Tanzan. We're actually going to be going down to the depths of Mount Tanzan. If you want to access the depths again, and let me grab that item. There should be a bunch of items that I haven't grabbed, but you want to act like you're heading over towards the meteor base, and there should be like a bunch of green shards over here. It doesn't really matter if you pick these up now or later. I just like grabbing them now. And the meteor base is actually destroyed, so you can't go in there. But you can go into this little hole right here. And it'll take you to the Mount Tanzan Depths. Okay, I can grab these items later. I'm sorry about that. So there's actually a couple things we can do here. So if you go up here, you should find a metal coat. And if you go over towards the left, then go up, you'll find sort of a steel plank walkway. I'm just going to use flash. It's not really necessary, but why not? Over here, you should find an upgrade. So if you have a Porygon, you can now evolve it into Porygon 2. And I'm trying to think, is it down here? I really hope it's not down here. I believe down here should just be a few more stones, mining rocks. 
So if that's something you want to take advantage of, go ahead. I don't think there's actually any important items down here. Just a bunch of mining rocks. But there is another part of the depths that we want to check out. I believe it's all the way down here. This should be the spot that you were at when you first fell down into... Or when you were first teleported down into the Mount Tanzan Depths by the Pulse Abra. So there's a healing machine and... I believe over here... To actually catch it? Okay, that's weird. I guess I actually caught it. But there should be a viper over here that's just lapping up at the acid. I'm guessing I did catch it on this file. Which is really weird because I was looking back through my videos and... I noticed that I didn't have any footage of it. But yeah, if you come down here, there should be a Viper lapping at the acid. It is a one-time catch, and I believe you need it for the Pokedex. So anyways, I think we've taken care of most everything. I'm going to head down to 7th Street for one last event. Here in 7th Street, we're actually going to come up over to this room, and we're going to start giving this Pokemon... Or this lady, not this Pokemon, this lady, the Pokemon that she's looking for. Starting with a Carvana. You get Carvana as a reward for the Aqua Gang missions if you're part of the Aqua Gang. But otherwise, you actually have to fish in the small pond in the back of the Aqua Gang, Gang's hideout, their alley. And you can only do that later after you've accessed 7th Street. Carvana is a rare um, catch in that area with a good rod. I actually used a fishing mod that just lets that auto reels everything. I'll have it linked in the description. It's part of this mod pack and I only use the fishing mod so it was really really nice because for the most part Carvana is actually pretty rare and you end up catching a lot of well not catching but you end up pulling up a lot of barboches. Really really annoying. So next she's going to ask for an Unpheasant. Again, you could have gotten a high-level Tranquil from Iolia Valley, I believe, and just leveled it up once. And now she's going to ask for a Luxray. So the only place you can get Shinx is at the Onyx Ward Casino or Game Corner. If you're going to straight up buy the coins to buy a Shinx, it's going to cost you about 100,000 Poké Dollars, and it's very expensive. I recommend you breed it as soon as you get it. Again, I'll actually have a another mod that I want to talk about. It is called a Speed Breed, and basically, it instantly, once you install it, it will instantly generate eggs for you, and it can instantly hatch them as well. So if you're into breeding, or even if you're not, it will save you so much time if you use it, and I'll have it linked below in the description. So I bred the Shinx, and then I took the higher level one. I leveled it up to a Luxray. So she says that, and we do need to come back, actually. Anyways, when she tells you that you need to give her time, Basically, all you have to do is leave 7th Street completely and then just come straight back down here. So the moment you leave the secret entrance to 7th Street that's above ground, just go straight back down and you'll come back down here and the entrance will be completely clear. So down here, I recommend that you save. And this cutscene is a little bit messed up. I'm not really fond of it. You could actually save right next to her. I wasn't too sure. But basically... You're not just going to be given Type Null. You're going to have to battle it and catch it, unfortunately. I don't have a lot to say on this one. It is a very difficult catch, and it also knows takedown, so it can slowly whittle down its own HP. But I'm not going to make you watch me catch it, so I'll talk to you in a bit. Wait, I'm back. I finally caught this thing. I had to soft reset three times. This thing is very, very expensive, and also you can't go back in there. But, again, it's level 50, I had to bring in my Rotom, I had to paralyze it, and then I threw, like, something like 40 plus balls. If you want to evolve this thing really, really quickly, then I recommend you go to the Critical Capture Shop, which is in South Obsidia, 
and buy some friend balls. They cost about 3,000 poke dollars each. They are very expensive, but that will help you raise its friendliness more, more quickly. Or you could just take it to the salons in Reborn City as well. But I wasn't dealing with any of that. I also brought along time balls because this battle can go on forever if you don't get lucky and finally capture it, so those really, really help out. Anyways, we have one more stop to make, and that is going to be the Apollo Academy. The reason we're actually here is for two things. One, there is a certain Pokemon up in this cave up here called Stunfisk that you can actually capture, and if you want to get a Vulpix for a trade later on, I highly recommend that you capture it now. It would be in this cave right here. But I also didn't show something off that was in this cave as well, and it's a good time to show this off and right now because we just got the type null. But basically, if you move that boulder out of the way because you need strength, over here you would find normally Torment and a Dragon Memory. Or Savali, of course. So anyways, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show off, and yeah, I caught the Stunfisk ahead of time, so I don't really need to do that. I'm going to meet you all north of the Van Hainen Labyrinth. Hopefully I took care of literally everything in this game that I could have taken care of up to this point. You know, because the next point is a point of no return. I, I just can't go back after that. I mean, sure, I could record footage from before you reach that point of no return, but as far as this walkthrough goes, it'd be kind of weird, you know, because anyone following would be past that point, and it'd just be really, really awkward. So I'll meet you guys there. Alright, so we are now here north of the Van Hainen Labyrinth. You could just get here by going through the Reborn City Gate, and you could simply ride the Crazy Tauros and get here. So we're going to go north, and I'm going to just ignore that item. And you want to talk to Kane, and he will ask you if he's if you're sure you're ready. So this isn't actually the checkpoint. This door right here is the checkpoint. Once you go through, you cannot come back. You cannot. And like I said, I won't be showing any events from before this point. So I highly recommend you go through Reborn City, you pick up all the hidden items, and you just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Like I said, if you want a Vulpix, catch that Stunfisk earlier. If you want certain Pokemon. Um, from before you enter this door, like that you know where they are in Reborn City already or the surrounding locations such as the Inventor and Woods or anything like that, go get those Pokemon right now. You won't be able to get them later. Something else I want to say is that if you need to change your Pokemon's natures, change them now. The nature changer will, you will not have an alternative once you go through here. Something else that I recommend is that if you go to the fifth floor of the Obsidia Market, what is it called? <laughs> the Superstore in Obsidia, the Northern... I don't know what it's called actually. The Obsidia Department Store. But go to the fifth floor of it and buy two Poké Dolls. They're actually going to come in handy. You could either buy them now or you could kind of have to struggle to get them later. Something else I want to mention is that the Grand Staircase, all the way the Grand Staircase in the Northern Obsidian Ward, the exit is going to be closed off. Like, you won't be able to go down there later on when we are actually able to get back into Reborn City from going through here. Through this door. And unless you saved all five of the policemen during the when you were going through the Jasper and Barrel Wards in the really, really, really early portions of the game. Unless you saved all five of the policemen, you will not be able to access the area under the Grand Staircase any longer. And I believe you won't be able to access the Cita de... idea how to say it. It's Cita Arc de Astra? I have no idea how to say it. I'll probably put that up, flash that up on the screen right now, just because I'm so clueless about how to say it, and I'm not really feeling like um, doing any Every kind of pronunciation test, or practice, or anything like that. So again, you won't be able to access that area when we come back, so I recommend that you go take care of anything that you need to take care of down there right now. And I think that's pretty much it. I really hope so. Anyways, we're going to move through here and we will witness a little cutscene and you will find the quirkiest person, quirkiest NPC in this whole entire game. 
Very, very freaky. Kind of funny in her own ways, though. So we will witness her hammering people off, and we ourselves will thankfully get to walk into the circus unscathed. So anyways, welcome to the circus. This is going to be our new home base for quite a long time. I bet you never thought... Well, I never thought I would be saying anything like that, because on its own it sounds kind of freaky. But anyways, there's a bunch of clowns, clown trainers, running around that I have to battle before we can actually move around freely through here, so I'm going to clear them out. And if you're curious, there is the healing station right down there, along with the APC in case you need to use them, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. Alrighty, so I took care of all the clowns, all the clown trainers. And it's time to go through all of these vendors one by one and explain what they have. So this guy over here has cotton candy. It's basically a revive. It costs 5,000 Poké Dollars. They're very expensive. I don't recommend revive, relying on them unless you have to. This guy over here is your basic sales good, goodsman. You know, he sells Ultra Balls, Super Pills, Potions, that kind of stuff. This is the Pledge Tutor. So... One, I said, I don't know if I said this earlier, but you can find everything you need here for the most part. This guy is actually the move tutor, and he still takes heart scales. This guy is a, he gives you a puzzle for one of the fossil Pokemon. I'm going to show that later, or actually we can show that right now. And I should have a link in the description later. It costs one green scale and shard. I don't know why I said scale, but basically this is a, a Caracosta puzzle actually, and it will get you a tier 2 fossil. I'm not going to make you watch me do this puzzle on screen, by the way, because it's very, very simple. It's just a simple sliding puzzle. And you should know the basics of that by now. Just do the corners, do the insides, that kind of stuff. It doesn't really matter that much. So I'll talk to you as soon as I finish. Right, so we finished, and you'll actually see the finished... I'll have a link to a image of the finished, what it should look like when you're done, in the description. So we'll get a cover fossil for that, and now we can move on. So over here is a kid that will want a polka doll if you give her a polka doll, but you could have bought this beforehand. Like I said earlier, she should give you the field notes for the high bonanza field. Is that it? I thought it was high bonanza field. Actually, it's high top field. Okay. So over here should be a ability capsule salesman. Over here is an NPC that should be in the game. It will ask you what your gender is and then self-destruct. It's kind of there to just make sure that you are of the right gender that you picked out. Wait, yes. Okay, there we go. And yeah, it just automatically self-destructs. It doesn't stay there for long. I believe this guy over here sells balloons and those could be very, very useful. I believe it was cheaper to buy them. Actually, let me check. No, 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 it's the same price, actually. Over here is the Hidden Power Checker, and over here, I believe, is a Nickname Changer. Okay, so far, so good. So over here should be another puzzle, actually. This puzzle is actually for the Plume Fossil, which I already have, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. And it's an Archeops this time. I think this one is actually a little bit easier to get through. Again, I'll have a link to an image in the description of what it looks like when it's finished, so you can kind of compare as you're working on it. Over here is the Pokesnack salesman. Over here is the candy or ice cream salesman. I was going to say cotton candy. I don't know why. Over here is the High Strike Challenge. So you can literally play it just by clicking on it and this is all luck basically so for I actually have to talk to him again if I call nice get you your money back powerful will get you a polka doll but the first polka doll you receive will actually be a clefairy which could be something very useful to get a hold of right now and if you ring the bell you get a TM and that TM is actually swagger so that's pretty neat. And over here is move tutors, basically. Both this guy and this guy over here are move tutors. I'll let you check that out on your own. Over here is a guy called Indra the Clown. So I'm not going to be dealing with Indra the Clown right now, but 
Basically, you can rebattle this guy, and not only will you get prize money if you defeat him, but you will also get shards. He uses different teams, and they're all kind of competitive with kind of good items for each Pokemon. And he fights in teams of three. He can be kind of annoying to defeat and train on, but he's there if you want him. So over here is yet another puzzle. So this is actually a puzzle to receive a timber. And this puzzle is a little bit different than the rest. So basically all the pieces are actually in place, but they're turned around so that they don't match up to make the full puzzle. So there's a bit of a strategy to completing this puzzle, right? What you want to do is you want to take this row by row. So you want to get everything in the first row all lined up, which can be really, really annoying. And I'm most likely going to embarrass myself because this one is very... Okay. That's lined up. Basically, when you rotate a puzzle piece, every puzzle piece around it will rotate as well. And again, your goal is to line up all the puzzle pieces in one row, then move down to the next row. For the moment. Only for the moment, actually. So as you can see, I got the first row all lined up. I'll have a link in the description again to what the puzzle looks like when it's done. And I'm also going to have a link in the description to a strategy guide for completing this. So I actually have three pieces here that are lined up. So I believe... There we go. So row 2 is lined up, I want to get row 3 lined up now, and... There we go, I have row 3 all lined up. So when you get to row 4... There's a bunch of things that could actually happen. So you want to check out your puzzle, and you want to decide how many pieces are actually out of line. And when I look at mine, it looks like only 3 pieces? No, 2. My corner pieces are actually in line perfectly, I believe, but my middle two are not. So when this happens, you have to... There's a bunch of solutions that you can take, and the strategy guide actually has all of them listed. So you don't have to do that on your own. So for instance, the two... This is the two corner tiles, actually. Okay, this is the two border tiles. And so for this one, my solution would be to up here. Wait, did I do that right? Okay, one, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, zero there, two here, three here, one here, three here, and one, and two here. And we're done. But the strategy guide that I'm going to have linked in the description, it's from the Pokemon Reborn forums. It'll have all the cases that could happen to you. There's like three different instances that could actually happen to you once you've gotten the first three rows in line. There's one case where you could have four tiles wrong. There's one case where you could have two corner tiles wrong. Or the one case where you could have the two border tiles wrong. The guy who came up with this, just to give him credit, is named Fair Family. But anyways... With that finished, we will obtain a Timber. So I'm just going to send Timber to New PC. Over here, we actually have a puzzle that you have to complete no matter what. And it is for the Dive TM, and it's a rookie puzzle. I'll have the completed puzzle in the description below, and I'll talk to you when I finish it. We're all done with the Froki puzzle, and we should get our TM for Dive. We can't actually use that. And you could actually play all of these puzzles again, I believe. Yep, unfortunately you kind of can. Oh, and I didn't mention earlier, but the bad news is that you actually can't restore these fossils if you get them. So, you either restored the fossil that you had, or you didn't, and you're kind of stuck. Something else I want to note about this um, about the dive puzzle lady is that if you come back here later, not right now, but later, at an eventual point, I will remind you to come back here later and you can do the puzzle again, it will be a different puzzle and you will be able to get a Turtwig. For some reason a lot of people think that you can just do the dive puzzle again, which is the Froki puzzle, and get a Turtwig, and that is not the case at all. So anyways, I think that's pretty much everything for 
this part right now. I don't want to overload this part too much. It's Easter and I have my own things to kind of take care of. But hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys later.